Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our church service here at St. Mary's Parish Church, Frinton on Sea. The first service of 2021, let's all hope and pray that this year is better than last. Here is an opening prayer for us. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Good Ground by Malcolm Gweet I love your simple story of the sower with all its close attention to the soil, its movement from the knowledge to the knower, its take on the tenacity of toil. I feel the fall of seed a sower scatters, so equally available to all. Your story takes me straight to all that matters, yet understands the reasons why I fall. Oh, deepen me, where I am thin and shallow, 
uproot in me the thistle and the thorn. Keep far from me that swiftly snatching shadow that seizes on your seed to mock and scorn. O oh, break me open, Jesus, set me free. Then find and keep your own good ground in me. And now here's our Bible reading and sermon for today. We're in the Old Testament prophet Jeremiah, chapter 31, beginning to read at verse 31. The time is coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their forefathers when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt because they broke my covenant though I was a husband to them, declares the Lord. This is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. No longer will a man teach his neighbour or a man his brother saying, Know the Lord, because they will all know me from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. A very famous and salutary reading from Jeremiah chapter 31. It talks about the covenant. A covenant. What does a covenant mean? In this is our covenant service in church today. The word covenant simply means an agreement, or even a solemn agreement. We don't hear it much today in everyday English. It's usually restricted to the church and to the law. In church, we use the word covenant to mean the solemn agreement between God and his people. The first covenant that was formed is found in the book of Genesis and was made by God to Noah. The waters of the great flood subside, and in this first covenant, God promises never to destroy life on earth again. The sign of this covenant will be the rainbow. Whenever we see a rainbow, we remember God's love of life and vitality and his promise never to wipe it out. Over time, however, the people forgot their side of the bargain and failed to worship and to honour God. So God again made a covenant, this time with Abraham. Abraham is told that he will be the father of many nations and that kings will come from him. He is told that this covenant will be an everlasting one between God and the descendants of Abraham. The sign of this covenant is not a rainbow in the sky, but a physical mark in male flesh, circumcision. When we talk about a covenant service, we often talk in terms of our renewing our covenant. But it is not. The new covenant, like the old, is God's choice, not ours. The covenant between God and Israel was, one, was not one that Israel made, but one that God made by choosing them to be his people. This is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel, God says through the prophet Jeremiah. He was not compelled to choose Israel. He could have chosen any other country. Israel was not more remarkable than any other nation. Quite the opposite. It was not the most powerful or the most civilized or the wealthiest. In choosing Israel, God chose a nation that was not a nation. It was a rabble of slaves in a foreign country. But this is the heart, the nature of God our Father. He acts in love, which is free and undeserved. Or as we might say, he acts in grace. This is what happens in the New Testament with the new covenant in Jesus. It is rooted in God's choice, free, unexpected and undeserved. And this is where we stand today. 
At this covenant service, we do not choose God, but beyond all hope and expectation, he is choosing you and me. In covenant, God promises to forgive the sins of those who seek forgiveness, to raise them to new life in the world, and to promise them resurrection from death. We receive this new gift of life as a free gift, not because we have earned it by doing good, but quite simply because we have trusted that God will forgive us and set us free from all that holds us back. And in addition, we are promised to live no longer for ourselves, but for God. We say that we are to be living sacrifices. This new covenant between God and humanity is also sealed by a mark in the flesh, but this time in the flesh of Jesus. And our side of this covenant agreement is to live no longer for ourselves, but to live for God. And the extent of this new covenant is God's world. We usually emphasize the importance of the individual in covenant making. But look again at that passage from Jeremiah. God does not make his covenant with godly individuals, but with the whole nation. It is true that not everyone responds to God, but in making this covenant, he has everyone in his view. Jesus continues in that same tradition as Jeremiah. He did not make the covenant with individuals, but with the twelve a number which symbolized the 12 tribes of Israel and therefore the whole nation. The blood he shed was not for the few, but for the many. Church-going folk like you and me can easily forget how worldwide God's covenant really is. We might see it as for the baptized, the believers, the select few who respond to God. But no, this covenant is for everyone, every class, every color, and every country. There is no limit set by God. It is for all. Our covenant with God, then, is not a gospel of good works, not something we do, but a gospel of grace. It is what God does. It is not a gospel of trying to please God, but a gospel of coming to God for his strength and his mercy. That is why, whatever our circumstances, we can make this covenant of God our own by giving ourselves to him, trusting in his promises and relying on his grace to all of us. Amen. Heavenly Father, this day is a new day like no other that has ever been before. This year is a new year. Let it be like an opening door. And as we open that door, we ask now, Lord Jesus, that you enter in, not just into our church, into our room, into our space, but that you enter our lives and our hearts, Lord. As we've just sung in that beautiful hymn, Be Thou My Vision, make us people of vision, Lord, particularly at the beginning of this new year. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray now that you fill this new year with your joy, the joy of your coming, that your coming would have real meaning in our lives and in the lives of everyone we know that Christ wouldn't just remain that baby born in a stable, but people would come to know the real Lord Jesus, the man who grew up, taught and discipled all whom he met, so that through him all would come to know a God of love, a God of joy and a God of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Last year was difficult, Lord, for lots of reasons, but you've shown us that there is light at the end of the tunnel. The journey of the last 12 months has been long and hard, with many ups and downs, but we thank you, Jesus, that you've brought us through. 
we read in Proverbs, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not rely on your own insight. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. In comparison with last year, Lord, how we long for some of our pathways to be a bit straighter. Fill us with your wisdom, Lord, so that we can be your covenant people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Over the Christmas period, we have read in the book of John that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. We know that we can only true, truly get to know you, God, by reading your Word every day. Help us to make that commitment that from the very beginning of the year, we will try to get to know you better. Help us to be disciplined in doing that, so that daily we can recharge our batteries, ready to do battle with whatever lies ahead of us. Your steadfast love is as high as the heavens. Your faithfulness extends beyond our imagination. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In Galatians we read, God sent his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. Heavenly Father, we know just what it's like to be living under the law, to live with restrictions on our lives. Help us to come safely through this period and into something quite new, where we can share our faith and bring others to also become adopted as your children. Infuse us with your love, whisper in our ears and our hearts to remind us constantly that we are your children, chosen and special. Guide our steps into this year in obedience and in celebration of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. And so we come to our blessing for today. The love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. The joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts. The blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. And a very happy new year to one and all. Stay safe. See you soon.
never give up You never lose hope You never slumber or sleep Time. 